Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is WeFX Guide, and it's time for Trowel version 1.5 introduction tutorial. Let's quickly check if both Trowel modules are installed and active. It's also beneficial to have Node Wrangler active, as it will help you with node manipulation. Now you should be able to find Trowel's interface on the side panel. It contains three main sections. In the first one, you can choose from a vast array of different brick sizes based on countries. For now, I will stick with standard and press the build set button. As you can see, Trowel has created all the necessary bricks for you, as well as their respective collections. Let's take a closer look. The first four bricks are from the low poly collection, and they are whole brick, half, quarter, and three quarter. The rest of the bricks are for high poly bricks. Let's give them a more detailed look. I'm using my other add on one click damage for that, but you can use any other method and even switch them to 3D scan bricks. Suppose you want to have your own brick size? I'll change this one quickly. Let's rename it as well to differentiate it from the others. Let's make it twice as high, for instance. All you need to do now is select the brick, hold the control button, and press on build set. Your new custom brick set has been built and is ready to use. I have already made a modern looking structure. Nothing fancy, just three modified cubes and a few more for future doors and windows. Let's select two of them. I've also chosen Running Bond from the list. As you can see, the fields for low poly and high poly collections are already filled, so all you need to do is press the Lay Bricks button. Let's change the viewport appearance for our objects to wire so that we can see the bricks better. It's time to look at the geometry node setup. Let's also check the distance between bricks to ensure everything is correct. Trowel is an instancer, so it relies on brick size and the given distance. We need to adjust it now, which is pretty straightforward. It's easier to do this one axis at a time. You can either make it smaller or larger, depending on your needs. Now, everything looks fine. Let's add another structure to our setup. It's easier to simply drag and drop it from the outliner. Don't forget to turn on relative. By pressing shift plus A, you can find the trowel submenu with all groups there. For bond types, modifiers, and masks. I will choose the same running bond as before. To avoid filling these fields manually, trowel has a sync collections button. You just need to select one or as many group nodes as you need and press sync collections, then connect the nodes and add it to the chain. In each bond group, you have this button to offset bricks inside or outside the source object's boundaries. For this one, I'll leave it inside because I want to use it as a Boolean object later. Speaking of Booleans, the new trial Boolean has become easier than ever. Put the entire collection here. Set it to use relative and separate children. This is important and plug it into the Boolean input. As you can see here, all the necessary bricks for that cut are already in place automatically. It's easier to see with the color split preview checkbox. It's entirely your creative decision where to cut and Trowel does the rest. Now, I want to make cuts inside here and here. And I'm going to use the same object we used for the bricks before. I'll copy it here for convenience. You can combine them with a join geometry node if two objects aren't sharing the same space. Let me show you. Here, you can see two objects conflicting with each other, which is causing a problem for the Boolean. The solution is simple. You need to fuse them together with a mesh Boolean node. Select Union here and connect the nodes. Let's do the same for this one. I'll plug it into the same mesh Boolean node and the cut is done. It's as simple as that. I'll quickly connect the other Boolean collection as well. Everything is procedural and you can change things on the fly. Now it's time to turn on the Use High Poly checkbox and see what it does. Because we use only five different bricks for high poly, you can easily spot the repetition pattern, but it's straightforward to fix with Trowel's modifier.
Let's place a 180 degree randomizer into the chain. You can place as many as you want if you feel you need more randomization. Now no repetitive patterns should be noticeable. Suppose you want to change the brick type to another one. You can simply drag and drop new collections into their fields. Select the node group and click on Sync Collections. You might need to tweak the size of an object to fit new brick types. And there you have it folks, that brings this broadcast tutorial to a close for the time being. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with the channel. Thanks for joining in today and stay curious. Look forward to the next transmission.